सेवन सिक्स फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन जीरो प्लस फाइव सेकेंड्स Lift off normal. Here tracking. we have a majestic lift off of LBM three M four rocket carrying India's prestigious Chandrayaan three spacecraft. P two tracking. Prajolan or Safalta Poon Uthapan LBM three M four rocket ka two hundred strap on boosters ka. Full turn stage ignited. Prajolan kal one hundred twenty six second ka hai. Two hundred stages are separated. One turn stage thrust cut off and separated. कक्षा प्राप्त कर ली गई है चंद्रयान थ्री को सफलतापूर्वक अंतक क्षेपित कर दिया गया है एल बी एम थ्री एम फोर मिशन इज सक्सेसफुल Namaste Jai Hind and what a proud moment ladies and gentlemen the more we see it the more we are proud of our scientists and it just all looks so easy isn't it but four years four years after it all went all over the place ladies and gentlemen just with that landing they've gone back to the drawing board and as Tomna ji the chairperson of ISRO said the first year went back to saying where we went wrong the second year went back to trying to correct all those mistakes and to preempt the other mistakes and then the third year went only into testing 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 and testing to the extent where we could just come back and say we're not only just going to attempt the landing we're going to go ahead and do whatever was our objective and beyond that's the expectation from the vikram rover we'll see that's the part that we've got to wait for now as it moves out of the earth's orbit sometime around early august and enters into the moon orbit and then moves itself towards that all important day of landing that is between the 23rd and the 24th of august so the next 40 days will be just watching the trajectory and perhaps counting down this journey to the moon began 6 weeks uh, has begun and now 6 weeks from now like i said that soft landing at around the 5 45 6 pm if all goes well that's where it was but as if on cue not even moving 1 inch from that dotted arc or the planned arc it just went to the t the world is sitting and taking notice of what our scientists can do ladies and gentlemen that lift off from sri harikota in andhra pradesh carries not just hopes dreams and ambitions of an entire nation but it also showcases to the world only three other space superpowers china russia and america it's showing them we can do it we can get it right and we do it much cheaper than what you people do there are others who are not even able to get their rockets to lift off and here we are we are expecting the lift up to be a given the chandrayaan 3 successfully separating uh, the the lvm 3 the bahubali rocket that uh, that then uh, moved there and you had the l110 and thereafter it was the cryo engine that took over so vikram is meant to have a safe uh, soft landing and this will be over south pole of the moon so once again it will roam over the moon surface for a one lunar day which is equal to 14 earth days and conduct scientific experiments this is india's second attempt for a soft landing on moon's lunar surface but this time around we are far better prepared our fuzzy logic is far more complex our preparation the lander itself there is a lot of weight the orbiter weight has been removed and more has been used to strengthen the lander and this is something which uh, the director isro himself agreed uh, and and conceded and also reveal to all of us so after russia the us and china india will then become the fourth nation to land on the moon and that too on the moon's south pole prime pm narendra modi who's in france tweeted and said that chandrayaan 3 scripts a new chapter in india's space odyssey and elevates the dreams and ambitions of every indian he am also said that this momentous achievement is a testament of our scientists now we break down to you the process of what happens next and how india is aiming to explore the unexplored it's the first it will be the earth orbit that will happen and from the earth orbit maneuvers the fifth orbit maneuver around the earth and then after that each time increasing the distance it swings away it's an elliptical orbit which happens and with each one you move away from the earth and closer to the moon's gravitational force and the moon's orbit and after the fifth maneuver it begins to move towards the moon and then it has to enter into the moon's gravitational force and enter into the moon's orbit so that the overall uh, orbiter itself and uh, the 
uh, it doesn't drift away into space. Now, this phase is the translunar injection phase and is expected to be on the 31st of July. Then comes the lunar orbit insertion expected on the 5th of August. The module orbits the moon four times and each time getting closer and closer. And then eventually it will reach a circular orbit of 100 kilometers into 100 kilometers. That's where the lander then separates from the propulsion module alters its orbit so that it comes as close as 30 kilometers to the moon and then the lander commences the soft landing procedures. The soft landing is expected to be on the 23rd of August at about 5.47 p.m. if all goes well. But why does Chandrayaan-3 matter? India's mission opens a set of new horizons when it comes to the space sector. One of the first reasons is that it showcases India's technical prowess in space exploration. The second, it will boost the morale of the scientific community. The third, the mission will foster a sense of national pride. Fourth, promotes indigenous research and development. Fifth, sector has potential to create lakhs of jobs. Reason number six or seven is that it will attract more private investment in space tech. And then position India among the top four tech advanced nations. In fact, push, push it ahead of some of the other ones. Pave the way for more international collaborations. More importantly, we'll be able to create that league where other nations, smaller nations will be willing to partner us and also put in a share of the pie because space tech, space exploration, space odyssey is a huge cost. But the next step after this successful landing, taking soils, bringing samples, we were the first, Chandrayaan-1 was the first to uh, prove that there is ice on the lunar surface. So what's the composition of the minerals, the soils, what does it move, uh, mean and the impact of it? And of course, the next would be to land a robot, get a robot to walk and maybe even return. And thereafter, it will be the Gaganyaan or that means the human exploration into space. So Gaganyaan is another objective that will be there. There are many scientists who believe we can do much better. We can do much better than the LBM. We can use far more powerful rockets which would not need us to use the elliptical orbits of the of the earth and the sun and the moon to give us propulsion and to take us into the direction where we need to and we can get there quicker and get out quicker but we leave it uh, for later let's go straight across to g madhavan nair former isro chief uh, madhavan nair ji namaste a historic day for us chandrayaan should we assume now that the journey will be comfortable and it's the landing that's in focus Uh, let us hope that uh, everything goes well. It's a long journey, for, uh, nearly 400,000 kilometers, and uh, again, almost a month's time. So we have to keep our two fingers crossed until then. I hope uh, everything will go all right. He's uh, done it right. Uh, I wish them all success at this stage. Last time, the soft handling aspect, uh, Madhavan Nairji, uh, that's where the fault was eventually. How big a setback was that? And to get it right, this time around, what would that mean for India in the space race? Well, in the Chandrayaan 2, it was a very narrow miss, I would say, that uh, the mission, everything went off fine. Uh, the, the spacecraft was put around the moon. From there, the lander was detached and it was put in a trajectory to have a soft landing on the lunar surface. But uh, unfortunately, just about uh, two kilometers above the surface, some glitch happened uh, in the system and the entire spacecraft tumbled and fell down. So with that, you know, the impact velocity was quite high and I'm sure the old spacecraft would have disintegrated by the time. So we have only a very short data uh, about that uh, incident and the ISRO team has done an extensive analysis on that and they tried to uh, conceive all possible scenario of such failure. Mm -hmm. And try to this. Of course, uh, uh, you must remember that it's a very complex operation, wherein which a platform is going to land on an unknown territory yes. with uh, almost blindfolded. There are only electronic sensors like uh, stereoscopic camera or the laser imaging system or the radars on board. And with that, you know, to make an autonomous landing system is extremely difficult. Uh, but we almost achieved it. But last minute. Either the software or the computer or the hardware would have malfunctioned. Mm. But uh, I think uh, I understand the ISRO has taken an approach to see that every element of that operation is revisited mm. and strengthened. 
and in fact today the landing gear has been much more stronger yeah. than in the previous one the thruster configuration has been modified it is simplified and also the the algorithm uh, to have safe landing has been modified mm. uh, and redundancy features have been incorporated in case one sensor or one actuator doesn't fail uh, something else to be called in to as a backup so that way they have done all possible uh, corrective actions and extensive simulations have been done over the last 4 uh, years and i'm sure this time uh, it should go without much of bleach but mm. still it's a long travel yes. and uh, hundreds of elements have worked in unison then only we will have the final result true when if you look at mathematics and probability uh, you have to get everything right and everything has to fall in place even a half point 1.2 point degrees of separation or variance can mean that this vehicle would land somewhere far far away than where it is intended to but uh, and and common man somebody who's not uh, understand science and tech as much as uh, you do sir some of this is lost upon us the amount of effort the amount of calculation and what kind of work goes behind the scenes why it takes so much of long uh, so much of time but uh, let me ask you uh, this time difference the how many people appreciate that it's virtually blind because there is a time lag and there is nothing in the control as far as the base control is concerned in uh, uh, back home uh, well of course uh, the time lag is a major issue as far as the communication with the spacecraft is concerned it is not possible to have a real time control from the ground so that's how the system is conceived in an autonomous manner everything is done with the onboard computer and all the logic which is required for the operation is built into you hmm. and the sensor data comes to the computer and computer takes based on the data which is available to it and that way uh, yeah. it is, once the command for separation is given the entire operation will take place uh, in an autonomous and automatic manner hmm. so we don't have to have any ground intervention we have to only keep monitoring but any incident happening we will know only about 8 seconds after that happened because of the time lag in communication uh, well uh, once we land there uh, is going to be a very unique uh, experiments are going to be conducted as you know in the chandrayaan 1 as well as in the chandrayaan 2 orbiter lot of information has been collected by through the remote sensing then so this data has to be validated what has to confirm and the unique finding was in the south polar region there is a huge deposit of ice Uh, that is a very unique finding and uh, india was the first country to announce that for chandrayaan 1 now this has to be confirmed again the type of minerals which are there the type of terrain features and uh, especially looking for elements like helium 3 all those things become important mm. so this lander will go there uh, first it will start moving around taking pictures and then trying to see what course it has to take the because what in days is available within 14 yeah. days how much distance it can cover and how much data it can gather as we plan mm. then of course the uh, the real time measurement of temperature the chemical composition of the material there and also the trace uh, gases there is no thick atmosphere around the moon but still there are trace gases right. then there are seismic activities which take place on the lobe yeah. and uh, this has uh, signals will be picked up and so on so this is going to be an in situ measurement a small laboratory on the surface of the moon collecting data for for about 14 days and relaying back to the ground and mm. this is going to add to our uh, knowledge about how the moon has originated and what was the condition at the time and uh, how what was the condition or the factors Uh, affecting the solar system uh, mm. about 4 billion years back and uh, throw some light as to the origin of the uh, old uh, solar system itself okay. so that way tremendous amount of uh, scientific knowledge will come out of the this mission and also a validation of what we have achieved through the remote sensing Uh, data in the past. Well, ab- absolutely. So it's not just for India, but for humanity. This is going to be a hugely important mission if we get it all right. But is all of our tech indigenous, uh, Madhavan Nairji? And what does that mean for uh, India and as a, as an active, as a lucrative space marketer, the viable option for nations? Do you see more Asian nations, other nations, gravitating towards India if we get it all right? 
Uh, well, as you know, uh, once we land there, we are going to become the fourth nation in the world Indeed. to do so. Yeah. Uh, entire technology for this is homegrown. We have not got any assistance or any uh, inputs from any other country. Mm. So that way we can be proud it's the Indian mission. And the only thing is we are carrying one or two instruments, which is from NASA. Mm. Uh, in the Chandrayaan one also, we have done that. Some instruments right. as a part of the international cooperation. We are giving a piggyback right to them. Right. So we are showing our capability in the space to mm. access not only around Earth, but also to the nearby planets also. So this is going to oh. be a, a great strength as far as the country is concerned. Right. And ISRO is known for doing all this on a shoestring budget. So naturally <laughs> the cost effectiveness is there. And the reliability of the ISRO launch vehicles are fairly high. To, uh, in even international standards. Hmm. Uh, so let us hope that uh, we will be able to capture not only the Indian market, but also the foreign market of space transportation using this system. Once you demonstrate this, others are going to really recognize the, the technical might and the quality of the Indian space products. Well, just because you can get there and land there doesn't mean you can come back. A lot of people are saying that. Do you think that's the next step, sir? How far are we from achieving that? To go and to come back? Well, I think uh, uh, the ideas are there and the system can be designed to do mm. so. Um, uh, for example, the water finding on the moon is a yeah. big, big one. Uh, if you want to get back, you, you need fuel. Yeah. The solar energy can be used to decompose water, take hydrogen, and that hydrogen can become the fuel for return journey. Mm -hmm. So the rocket's uh, hardware can be realized here and taken there and fill the fuel from there and then relaunch back mm -hmm. to there. So that possibility exists. Mm -hmm. So only question is it takes uh, time and money. Mm -hmm. And money, of course, as you uh, know, the country, uh, we cannot afford to have that luxury. But still a small portion of the budget is being used for plant exploration. Mm -hmm. And this is part of that. And this is going to be a stepping stone towards uh, probably a robotic exploration to start with wow. and maybe the human presence at a later stage, maybe in about 10 year time frame. Hmm. Final question, sir. As a scientist, what are the chances that you're giving that they'll get it right this time? Uh, well, I, as I told you, <laughs> uh, it can be the ISRO is known for its uh, culture of learning from the past yes learning the correcting the mistakes and going forward mm. and so mistakes don't repeat there so that's the track record of his work so certainly that gives us a confidence right but at the same time as i mentioned hundreds of elements and systems software everything has to work precisely right. then only we have the final mission so we have to keep our fingers crossed all the way and we have to hold our breath until it touches down and the rover starts moving around. Well, fingers crossed on that. Ajay Madhavan Nayarji, thank you so much. Always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for your time, sir.